Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, and welcome to Energy Speaks Back, powered by Hark. My name is Paul Webb. I'm the founder of B2B Energy and your host. Wherever you're listening to this podcast today, I truly hope that you are safe. We would like to thank our episode sponsor today, Esther Energy, and for the work they do regarding the certification of our training, Global Energy Experts to make them certified global energy experts. This is episode 46, where weekly I present to you experts from around the world. And today I'm in Arizona, America. And the purpose, as always, is to provide a good understanding of energy management knowledge from around the world, which is available today for us to deliver savings that impact on our planet. My guest today focuses on recycling, solar, and refurbishing solutions. She is passionate about saving the landfill from millions of solar panels, which will be coming to end of life in years ahead. So without any further ado, I give you Jeanette Freeman. Good afternoon, or should I say good morning, Janet? How are you? I'm great, and you can say good morning or good evening. It's as long as it's good, right? Yes, as long as it's good. It's good to see you. You're looking great today with the matching top and your hair all blending into one. It's amazing. (laughs) Thank you. we get some photo shots for that later. Why not? So I only just met um, through LinkedIn and our social media. Um, And I'd love to learn more about yourself. And I'm sure our audience today would like to hear a lot about yourself. So can you give us some background? Thanks. Well, I'm glad to be here with you, Paul. And I'm here. I, I'm very passionate about solar panel end of life solutions with solar panel recycling, solar panel refurbishing, and trying to get a handle on uh, what's happening in that field. So I've been in the wonderful energy energy industry just a little bit over a year, and it's uh, been quite quite uh, a great adventure. If we have time, I'll just tell you a little bit of my background. Yeah, please do. Since, since this is my second career, I know many of us have had at least 10. <laughs> and uh, But for the last 20 years, I worked as an expert in the, uh, in, in the mind, emotional intelligence, mind. I have a doctorate in consciousness studies. I've worked with, with uh, many people in Anything as simple as, you know, changing an attitude to be able to change your life to really clearing out old subconscious patterns. My first book was, why did this happen to me again? So just why things happen to us over and over again and how to change ourselves on the inside in order to have a a different effect on the outside. And through that career, I had the opportunity to start centers and businesses, and I have that entrepreneurial spirit. And so just a little over a year ago, and it was about the time I was kind of really wanting a new challenge. I'd done the same thing for 20 years. I wanted to do something different and, and I wasn't sure what, and it was right around COVID, you know, and at the time I was teaching in uh, psychiatry and working with uh, patients in their stress management and that sort of thing. And um, at the same time, my sister and her her husband, my brother-in-law, had had been in this salvaging business for 20 years. Well, the last five years, they got into the solar business. Now, as good entrepreneurs, they keep their ear to the ground, and they basically got an opportunity to bring in some, you know, a thousand solar panels and um, fix fix them and resell them. And they had a system, and they had a they had a structure of customers to buy things. They knew how to do that quite well. And uh, five years ago, they had just a little warehouse. And today, uh, five years later, we are the one of the major refurbishers in the solar industry, having uh, co- facilities on the East Coast and the West Coast. We uh, refurbish solar panels to give solar panels that are really not at their end of life a second chance at life so that we can uh, really apply the principle of reuse. Anyway, so they had this company and they were hiring people right and left and they were doing all this sort of thing. And 
And so we got talking and I said, I, I wonder if my particular unique skill set would match anywhere in the company. I don't know. Maybe you guys could talk about it. <laughs> I don't know. And uh, anyway, so they came back later and offered me a job to develop this side of the, their business that they had. They wanted me to come in and make relationships and develop business of making relationships in the large scale utility side to to be able to set up the uh, structure and to set up um, the business for being able to handle recycling and refurbishing with the solar utility bill. So. That's what I've done in the last year, set up and have been having a fabulous time in branching into a whole new industry in um, finding those those customers that have already uh, got, you know, end of life. And, and we find those at the end of construction where there's a certain amount of damages and also then in repowering and maintenance conditions and such. And so... Um, so that's, I mean, I'll just get keep going, <laughs> but that's kind of the <laughs> background. Me, I'm interested to know what what period end of life is. How many years does end of life happen on a on a solar panel? Yeah, uh, um, most most warranties on uh, most manufacturer warranties on solar panels go anywhere from uh, twenty five twenty to thirty years, but twenty five to thirty years, and there are. There have been a lot of panels that are still going after 30 years. Yeah. They are pretty durable. Yeah, so yeah. some panels will last quite a while. So, um, but, you know, as you know, the, uh, the industry improvements and the higher wattage modules and higher technology modules and prices going down in modules it creates an opportunity to repower long before those those solar panels are at their end of life because the the investment will bring such a better return yeah. on um, on the solar panel so it becomes beneficial to pull off those panels that maybe are 200 watt 250 watt and put on a 400 watt for the similar amount of space that is used so so we're seeing we're starting to see a lot of solar panels coming off now we know with so much growth in this industry, there's a lot of solar that's that is going on, mm -hmm. and um, you know, in in ten years, there's going to be a lot of panels that are going off, and so it's kind of at that at that place right now. There is there, right now there are um, not uh, there's not a lot of policy in the United States in place to ensure and to help this industry, they say the recycling, refurbishing industry, to help the um, all aspects of it to be beneficial for the customer because it's still, it's still expensive to recycle solar panels. So way too many solar panels are going into the landfill. Now that may not be a huge issue right now, but it, it actually speaks to and points to huge issues down the road. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Now, so, one thing. Uh, so, I've seen recently some images of like the graveyard of solar panels and wind turbines and batteries all in sort of piled up on these sort of wastelands and things, which it does worry me. And it's one thing we didn't do back in the industrial revolution when we was building these power stations and looking at coal fired and oil fired. No one thought about the future. No one thought about well, what are we going to do with these power stations? What are we going to do with the emissions that are going to come from these? No one thought about it at that time. We was only worried about getting the power out. Well, now, this is the refreshing thing. We're thinking about that now. We're thinking about the future. You know, I've been interviewing people regarding the circular economy, regarding you know, taking this technology and thinking about the waste of when it's going to be at its end of life. Now, I'm interested to know, um, so we're going to recycle these units. Do they increase the efficiency or do the efficiencies, do they stay the same or is it going to enhance them? Um, you mean when we refurbish them? Yes. Yeah. Um, no, it, it will not increase their efficiency, but what it will do is it will 
allow them to be used because many of them still have plenty of efficiency. So well, I'll back up. A solar panel uh, is said to maybe lose 10% efficiency over 10 years. So if it was a, of a, yeah, it may lose, it may not, a, a 200, a 200 watt panel may be operating at 180 watts over, mm-hmm. you know, past 10 years, past 15 years ongoing. Uh, most of the time it doesn't actually, unless there's some other condition, but a lot of times it won't even, it won't lose past 20 to 30% efficiency. So, um, so the solar panel, let's say, it has 200 watts, maybe it'll go down to 180, you know, maybe 170. But if it doesn't, it's not hit by hail or some problem, this solar panel is just going to keep on ticking. It's just doesn't have a lot of moving parts, just sitting there collecting the sun. Okay. So um, refurbishment is, is a value-based uh, solution that helps offset the cost for recycling. And that becomes very important when we look at the whole end of life planning, yeah. um, because and let me just let me just give us a, a framework. So here's refurbishing, and I'll get back to some specifics on refurbishing. What what makes it refurbishable? What we can do with it? What's it worth to you? And then there's recycling. Okay, and recycling is a, still an expensive. Uh, it's an expense. Okay, and it. It can be very expensive. It uh, to recycle a solar panel probably costs anywhere from mm, twelve, thirteen, mostly fifteen dollars to seventeen, eighteen dollars per solar panel. Okay, so um, that doesn't count the freight to get it to a recycler. That's even more. So um, when a when a field is uh, looking at, uh, they've got, let's say let's say 5,000 solar panels that need to, that are in, that are either damaged or broken or coming off. And they start looking at that and they haven't really thought about that. It's not part of a line item budget. And all of a sudden they do get an estimate to recycle the solar panels because, Hey, they're in the renewables industry. Yeah. We want to be a recycler, but then they look at that and then they come back and they get a quote. It's going to cost them, I don't know, this is right. I have, but it's maybe fifty thousand dollars or something by the time it's sprayed and yeah. recycling costs and everything else. And they're like, and then they figure out, well, I could send it to the landfill and it's going to cost me, you know, five hundred dollars. So guess what happens? Uh, landfill wins. So that's that's the problem. Now, for that one person that or that one company that's gone okay it's you know it's some so and so sitting out in in the room you know in the in the, in the trailer on the site making a decision you want to get rid of these and they can't, they have somebody figured out go send those to the landfill okay mm-hmm. that's not going to that's not that's not the end of the world but what happens when we have hundreds of hundreds of thousands and now millions of solar panels going to the landfill and we have trace amounts of lead and we have trace amounts of, of um, other types of, of ingredients, uh, toxins that hit into the soil. And then what happens when, you know, uh, that, that level of problem. So my, my sense and my belief is that the renewable, I mean, we are, the renewable industry is changing everything. And it is a, we were kind of like uh, cowboys, you know, in the wild, wild <laughs> west, and we're doing new things, and and we're kind of building it as we go, right? Yeah. I don't know. I, I'm kind of an idealistic person, and I just feel like you know, these uh, a, a lot of the uh, f- these forgers in in the renewables are people that really do care about the environment, and that care about our climate, and care about um, our, our earth. So my belief is that, you know, we all have to come together and not wait for the government to make it a policy, but that we, you know, bring that sort of soul to our company and to our businesses and we make the right choices. And, and yes, we can, and we can still, we can actually really profit off of that too, through, you know, our PR and our branding and our marketing to be, 
to be one the companies that are uh, out on the end out in the front leading the way and i do and i do work with and see a lot of the big leaders that they really are doing that they they don't want to be the company that's known as you know <laughs> that just got written up in the newspaper for loading you know <laughs> half a million solar panels at the local landfill right so um uh i i I, I think we're going to see a lot of shifts and a lot of changes. Yeah. Now, the other the other thing about recycling is uh, recycling, as I mentioned, recycling solar panels is difficult. It's um, it's a it's a um, it's a sturdy piece of equipment. <laughs> it's made of lots of different ingredients. The ingredients separately are not that valuable. We got some glass, and it's pretty dirty at that. And we've got some aluminum and then we've got small amounts of metal in the solar uh, module itself in this, in the cell. And um, it's takes, it's going to take a recycling of a lot of solar panels to drive the competition, to drive the industry. And so we need people to to recycle because that will bring the cost down for recycling. Yes. And, uh, and, and uh, so the, the end stream is more valuable as well. So, so it all works together. Now, now, let's look at this from the economic standpoint. We've got solar modules that we need to do something with. Okay, we've got recycling that's quite expensive. We've got freight, which is a line item that's smack dab right in there. And then uh, we've got the refurbishing. So we've got two line items that are that are uh, costs, and then we've got a refurbishment aspect, and this is where our company comes in. Our our company is an all inclusive refurbisher recycler, and what that means is that we can do it all, so that we can handle the you know the logistics of it, we can handle the sorting of it, we can send the recycler that which needs to be recycled and build a customer for that. But yet we can, we'll go through those and we'll salvage anything that we can possibly salvage in those solar panels and pay the customer for those panels that can be refurbished. Mm -hmm. And that is like that little piece that can, can help, you know, to offset those costs. So, um, and then, and then, and then all those that we bring in to refurbish then that goes through our refurbishment system. So uh, you had asked about that a little bit as, as what happens to a solar panel to make it refurbishable. Many times, many times, many times those solar panels aren't even damaged. You know, yeah. they're coming off the site. Uh, we'll inspect it. We evaluate it we, before it even gets to us many times. And we know what it's worth. And as long as it's in the condition that they say it is and we see it, it's worth a certain amount of money. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, it doesn't take much, but maybe, you know, going through the car wash, <laughs> you know, go through the washer and yeah, shine it wipe them. Mm-hmm. And so, so that's, so that works. The, the resale value of these units, is it going to be less than what it was originally? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes. Sometimes the cost of a solar panel uh, might be 25% of the original cost. Think of the uh, used cars, you know, used car business, uh, where there were all new cars coming into the industry, you buy, buy a new car, and then eventually, you know, there's a lot of turnaround, there's a lot of improvements. Now we start to have the used car market, and this is very similar. So there's the used solar panel market yeah and, and they're still good for people and and that's the that's the that's the other beautiful downstream advantage of this is helping people uh, be able to take advantage of solar that normally couldn't really afford to yeah so i'm thinking developing countries where that can be exported to and we can make energy available to people that are less fortunate um, in these developing countries. Right. That's, that's what we could be looking to evolve, isn't it? Yes. And that happens. That's happening all the time. And it's, um, there's, 
talking hundreds of thousands of solar panels that are going into the international marketplace and into the third world countries. And um, that is happening. And, and we're even seeing we've donated to some nonprofits that take in the wow. solar panels to help put into villages to help give them power. And uh, it's quite an ordeal for uh, for these companies to do that. It it's, doesn't happen. It's, it's a lot of logistics. It's a lot of logistics, and it's an ex, it's a heavy thing, a solar panel. But so anyway, is there, many, um, is there many organizations doing this at the moment? What you're doing, or are you leading this? There, are, um, there are a few that are doing it. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Right. And I, I would say that I would definitely say that we are a leader in the organization, in that whole field. And part of that reason is um, part of that reason is that we have an infrastructure of sales on the secondary end that's already was in place. And the right. company already um, in that business of selling to do it yourselfers. And so we sell a lot of um, we sell a lot of onesie twosie. We sell a lot of five panels here and you know three panels there, and we sell a lot of uh, uh, um, to individual people. And yeah. then we also sell you know bulk and in, to international markets and uh, larger to small scale to smaller installers. And so and we sell used solar. And now we're you know we now we're selling new solar. Uh, as well, you know, when we can get a hold of some good pricing because we sell direct to yeah. the customer at really good low prices. So all of our, you know, we have to buy low. But uh, and when we're talking about the solar that you're taking in, is that from commercial buildings, from ground areas, or from residential? Not residential yet. Residential isn't quite organized. Uh, well enough yet, you know. It's probably not uh, old enough, is it, in the residential world? We've probably got another five, ten years more before we start seeing that impacting on in, in that environment, do you reckon? Yes, and and it it definitely needs to have some infrastructure in. That's a di- that's a difficulty with one onesie choosy. I mean, I talk. Yeah. I have people call me that are residential. They're selling their house for some reason. They need to get rid of these solar panels. And, you know, it's, it's really tough. You know, they've got to find a way to get them off the roof. Then they've got to ship them. Then they got to pay for recycling or I'll take them if I can, you know, salvage them. But then they got to ship them. And it's just so that's a whole new logistical kind of a thing that I have some ideas about. But but I'm sure lots of people have some that's, ideas about that. But maybe that is on the that has to be on the roadmap, but it not has, at the moment. Yeah, it has to be on the roadmap. But I think that it's right that the large, the larger scale uh, u- utility or commercial solar is leading the way because there's the quantity. So a company, any company, recycler, like what are you going to do with ten solar panels? You know. Mm. So um, with with the with the larger scale, we so we'll do. Um, we work mostly with. Uh, manufacturers themselves so manu we have you know contracts with certain manufacturers that will send us their some warranty returns or some damages or things that aren't good enough to sell or commercial um, commercial developers that um, are repowering rooftops and then are going to take off rooftops uh, solar systems that that uh, you know maybe any Three or four hundred panels to you know five thousand panels. Um, then we work with solar utility sites uh, after construction with the construction damages. You'll they'll usually see. Um, so I heard one to three percent, sometimes less, which is is good of damages at construction. And then those the, the thing about those is they are mostly damaged. You know, there's reason they're not putting them on, and they. Are, usually damaged and and damaged when i say damaged if a solar panel is got broken glass and it's uh it's got broken glass either sh- any kind of shattered or really broken it's not refurbishable so it has 
go to the recycler. And then if it's broke, if it's bent frames or a, you know, wiring or junction box or something like that, then that's, that's fine. So a lot of times there's a, there's a percentage in those that can be um, refurbished and can offset those costs. So, so, so it's quite, it's a unique, each solar panel that comes into you is going to have its own unique recycling program, isn't it? Whether you say it's cabling, glass, or quite a big task. Uh, it's going to have everyone, everything that comes in, every every job that comes in is going to have a unique framework. That's why it's hard to just say, what's the price? You yeah, know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> what you got? <laughs> what can I do? It's kind of like, yeah. well, what do you got? And what do you want to see happen? And not, this is, I mean, we just don't have any margins in recycling and freight. And that's where all the cost is. And so mm-hmm. um, I got more, I've got more leeway in refurbishables, but if they don't have any panels worth anything, you know, it's kind of, it's kind of is what it is, but we don't know that until we have a conversation until we explore it. So every, every different, every job is, is, um, you know, a little bit, a little bit different. So, yeah. Yeah. So I presume you're only niching currently in the solar sector. Are you looking at other renewables in the future? Wind power, windmills, et cetera, batteries, cars? Um, no, no, but um, we are uh, and batteries. So we have, we, we decided that it was a better business model to do all of our refurbishing in house and to use recycling partners that we approve that are EPA approved and that are going to not landfill and that are going to recycle and make sure that the aluminum is recycled and the glass is recycled and that all parts of the panel are recycled uh, throughout the country so that we could have partners in different places of the country because the freight is such a prohibitive factor. So um, these these partners were, you know, some are able to recycle batteries and then I can also help to facilitate um, some of these things, but I haven't done anything with wind at all. And I don't, I don't, I don't think my partners have either. Yeah. So this is, it's all new and there's, the need creates innovation. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. That could evolve, couldn't it? Could quite easily evolve. And so the businesses could evolve around that when there is that need for that work to be done. And right. there might be a partnership set up or you may decide to take that on yourself. Yeah. You don't know. Well, and you know, I mean, that's the that's the part for me that is exciting about this industry is um, is that we're building something for the future. We're not we're we're moving forward based upon what some challenges that we see in the future and some goals that we see in the future, and it's kind of like you know. That uh, you may have heard that expression, um, you know, it's like build it as you go. Like you're building the ship as you're sailing. <laughs> you know, you're you're building something as you go. You don't know what you're going to need until you do it. And so, it's it's kind of like that, not just for us, but for many people in this industry, is that we're, you know, building it. We're building it as we go, and it does take a, a certain mindset, and it does take a certain person. Especially, um, you know, uh, I mean, we're a small family business that's growing, but still, in, in the nature of this whole corporate world, we're just a family business that are entrepreneurs. And, you know, building it as you go, going, yeah, we can do that. Okay, now let's figure out how to do that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. That's amazing. I, I'm, I'm like that with my training, so I don't stop training. I'm 57 now, and I'm still learning every day so i've learned something today you know i'm constantly yeah. pushing the learning 
and I called it learn as you go because we yeah. are. Right. Yeah. You know, That's and we have so to keep on top of it. Yeah. I want to step back right to the beginning. Um, listeners are going to hate me because I'm going to take us right back. So this is a step change for your career. I'm really intrigued. What was the, what's the pull from doing what you were doing before to this industry? Where, what made that? What was the trigger point for you? I'm kind of a um, type A type person that likes to achieve and accomplish. And I've been known as a visionary. When I built, you know, mindfulness centers 20 years ago, I was talking about, like, I was doing that 20 years ago. Right. And I... I could see something and I started these centers and they grew and I like that aspect of growing the business. And I like that aspect of, of creating something out of like nothing, you know? And, um, and, and there was a lot of charge for that in inside of me. And then, um, and then pretty soon, you know, I, I went through a lot of personal challenges and things and, and I, you know, I'm just sitting, I just felt like, yeah, I can sit in classes and teach people to meditate and relax, but I'm going to fall asleep, you know, like, <laughs> <laughs> you know, it, it, I don't, and, and I'll be honest with you. I don't think I even knew how much I needed this. I, I don't, I'm sure I did not know how much I needed it. But it was the kind of conversation that I had with my sister, and and then they said, "Listen, how about that?" And, and they offered me more money than I was making, and I saw way more money opportunity, and that was like, "Oh, okay." And so I had that feeling, you know, you, some, you know, I'm very intuitive, and it's like sometimes you have a feeling, and it's a definite yes, you know, and mm-hmm. and it was just one of those definite yeses. And it was all in alignment with like COVID and this part of my life was shutting down. It was like winding up and shutting down. And this part of this opportunity was saying, here, take it, just take the apple and run. And uh, at the time I lived in another, I lived in California, another state. And um, so anyway, I just, I, I didn't really think too hard about it. I just like everything else was drying up. I mean, I could have done the whole zoom thing. I'd done that before, but I just didn't want to. That's all. And so mm-hmm. I, I just said, yes. And I, and I came over here and I, within a month or two, I just decided to move because, you know, they said you could work remotely, but I'm like, why do I want to work remotely? I don't even know the industry. I want to be around solar panels. I want to learn by being in, in the, in the atmosphere of it. And so I just moved. And, um, I didn't know anything, but you know what? It's, um, you bring who you are to everything you do. So yeah. I bring who I am to everything I do. And like my sister told me, she goes, Jeanette, <laughs> she goes, you've been making relationships. You've been an amazing relationship builder your whole life. You, you might as well come over here and get paid really well to do it. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> I think you're right. <laughs> I think I'd like to do yeah, I think I'd rather work in that. <laughs> so anyway, that's kind of that's kind of how it's been. And I didn't know how much I would like it. I love coming to work every day. I love the, you know, uh, do I get frustrated? Yeah, I get frustrated. But uh, it didn't take me long to find a new mission, you know, because I'm purpose driven. I'm not somebody mm-hmm. that just does something for the money. I have to have a higher purpose in what I do. And so it didn't take me long to figure figure that higher purpose out with this, you know. Now I can I'm going to save the landfills, you know. <laughs> yeah. So now you're stopping these solar panels going to landfill and to go to a better use. Yeah. And if they're being shipped to overseas to third world countries, that's that's a fantastic thing that you're supporting. Yeah. Um. So, Jeanette, is this is this time in my interview where I like to put the uh, interviewee on the spot and is there something that you can give back to our industry today as a takeaway um well i i would say that no matter 
no matter who we are, no matter where we are, what aspect of the industry that we're working in, I think that we remember that we are uh, pioneers and we are all pioneering a new way of powering our planet. And how can we do that which we do in a way that is most in alignment with the bigger values of the whole system versus the little goals that only uh, help our pocketbook in the short run? You know, so it's like wherever we are, how can we keep our eye on the big picture of what we're here all to do collectively and move our industry forward by thinking of the end result, thinking of the future? Totally agree. I, I would like to add to that. I always say the whole is um, greater than the sum of its parts. So if we all yeah. work together, that is where we need to be doing. You know, I'm. So my background is energy management. I focus on energy management. However, I'm bringing in all these experts in to talk about their their story and to share that story. You know, I want the whole world to hear these stories, and I think that that's me doing my bit and bringing that the parts together. So thank you very much for yeah, that's really true, Paul. The way you do that is by bringing voices and by by having and not only first when I thought of this, I. You're in the UK, I'm in the US, but then I looked at what this show is really about and the value of, you know, having global voices all over really brings us together and helps us remember that, you know, what we do in our little pieces actually affects all parts of this beautiful planet we all call home. Yeah. And we, there's, another, there's another saying, we all speak different languages, but we all speak the same language of reducing emissions and saving our planet. Yeah. So this, you know, it's everywhere I go, I'm getting the same story, and it's an, it's absolutely an amazing journey. So, Jeanette, thank you very much for joining us um, this morning and my evening. So thank <laughs> you. And uh, I'll let you go to your day, and I'm going to start finishing my day. So thank you very much. All for right, Jeanette, Paul, and your you family. So well, and you and your family, please be safe in these times. Thank you. Thank you for our special guest today and thank you for our sponsors b2b energy which can be found on at b2benergy.co.uk and clean energy revolution which can also be found either through various different social media networks type in hashtag clean energy revolution that leaves me with one more thing to say be safe